Shane White, and this is The Process. Okay, so continuing the topic of inking, I'm going to use my Hunt 102. So, what you'll notice about the Hunt is that it's a smaller tool. As you can see, this, I'm holding it a little bit differently. It just depends on what angle I'm working with. And it's got a lot more spine, obviously, than a, than a brush. And you can really press down hard. I think a lot of people get a little nervous and they, they don't really, they're not really comfortable. And so they end up with lines that are very, very dead. And this is essentially a style. I mean, you can work something that's very simplistic, but you know, you can also really push down and it bounces back because it's made of steel. That's what's great about these things. Now these were largely used for inking back in the early days of comics. It was a fairly traditional tool that a lot of illustrators used back in the early part of the 20th century for illustration, whether it was on-site news illustration for newspapers or courtroom illustrations or book illustrations. Obviously, it got adopted by cartoonists and the like. So the thing about this is that, unlike a brush, you can only go in certain directions. You can't, you can't go backwards unless you wanna mess up your nib. You'll, you can't go up. It, it, it will literally tear up your paper. So it's almost like, it's, what's interesting about it is it's almost like the, it's almost like the 180 degree camera rule, which basically states if you have a person here and a person here, that a camera should never cross this, this line. Essentially, you can do everything to a point and then it starts getting messed up. So keep that in mind when inking with a pen nib. A lot of the same principles apply. Again, you're physically trying to wrap light around an object. But in this case, I'm always, always pulling lines away from me. I rarely, I rarely bring them in like this. You can see it's not very, for me anyways, you may be able to master it in a different way. A lot of people use these tools differently than I do. So keep that in mind. But the job I just I recently worked on had had a lot of a lot of line work to it, and you can see I can I, I can have a lot more control. So I was doing a lot of hair, and in doing that, I was able to find the flow of things. And usually, if you're inking with a pen, Hunt 102 or or, or other dip pens you will probably fill in areas of black with a brush. It's just easier to do. You know, if I, if I had to sit here and fill that with black, it'd take me all day. And also with a, a pen like this, you'll actually wet the paper so much that it weakens the fibers. I mean, it really will weaken the fibers. And it will, 
it'll become mushy and it can actually start splitting the fibers and dragging them elsewhere and getting caught in your in your nib. So keep that in mind. So say you're you're illustrating something. Let's do something really quick here. Like a face. Usually I, I pencil much tighter than this. I don't trust myself. Since we're just playing, that's perfectly fine. I'm determining that the light's coming from this angle. It's got some shadow. What I tend to do is I tend to outline. and then figure out where do I want the light to bend. Now if the light's coming from here, there's gonna be hard and soft edges. And that's really important when you're talking about inking and painting, is that you want to make sure you understand how edges work. So the cast shadow of the nose is going to be a sharp, sharp edge. But the cheeks, for instance, and the forehead, are gonna bend more towards the light. They're rounded. So a lot of this will be a combination of feathering, whether it's really slight. So like the top of the nose might have some feathering because it is a rounded surface, but that's a personal choice that you may make at some point. Now you, you can see that there is some variation in line weight, and one trick with the Hunt 102 is that you turn you turn the the pen in the direction that you want to be working in. So, say I want to pull a line, my my pen nib is in that direction. But I say I want a thinner line. Well, I can I can just not turn it towards the direction. It'll be a bit of a dead line. But you can do a lot with that. I can also do it, I can make a thin line that way. It'll have more character. But sometimes, sometimes you want a bit of a deadline for certain effects. I tend to mess things up a little bit, play around with shapes. Now you see this whole area right here in the face, I'm not, I'm just not gonna fill that. I mean, I might do stuff like this where it's like backlit. There might be a, a softer light back here. So I'm trying to indicate that in some way. So let me finish with the hair. The job I was working on, the artist really, really liked hair, which was great because I needed to get better at and working with hair anyways. And so it made me very conscious of just doing better work. So I was happy for the opportunity. Okay, so there's that. Let me fill this with, with ink to show you what I mean as far as working with a brush. There's a lot of people who have videos doing this kind of thing. One of my favorites is uh, Denis Rodier. He's a French comic artist. You should check out his Instagram as well as his YouTube channel. 
I think he posts something like every day. Even though I ink all the time, I'm still amazed by, by what he can do. That's one way of illustrating a, a face. Probably didn't need that line there. That's the thing about playing is you, know, you just keep trying stuff until you mess it up again, which I do all the time. So I don't feel bad about, about practicing like this. Like the, the brush, I will I'll do the same technique, you know, landing the plane, plane takes off. Landing the plane, plane takes off. It starts becoming a mantra at some point. Most of your feathering will be thinner than with a brush, but you can also do a lot more cross hatching effect which is really great. If you really like cross hatching, this is a fun tool to work with. You do have to load it up a lot more with ink, but if you load it up too much, I usually try to keep a scrap piece of paper or, or I get this started like this. And then I, I get back into, into working on the or whatever it is I'm inking. And the thing about this is that the ink actually will sit on top of the page. It will remain wetter longer. You have to work in areas and then move on to something else. To another area to get it to dry because if you keep dragging over the same area like I said before you, you may run into problems with the paper catching getting too too wet so find a way make your mark you know get in there play around sketch draw some stuff Figure out how light works. Copy a photograph. There's so many ways to to ink. That you may find new ways just by playing. Creating space with lines is another way of creating a fading effect. I mean, I don't use this ever, but that's kind of cool. Do you wonder how far you can take it? Yeah, let's see if I can pull a long line. That's. Back in the day, a lot of golden age artists or whatever, or so I've heard, they'd have these little contests to see who can ink the thinnest line closest to another line. I think they were doing it in the Jerry Iger studios. If you don't know who I'm talking about, look him up. He and Will Eisner had a studio back in the early days of comic strips. Stable of artists that would keep working on projects. It was back when you could actually make a, a living wage doing comics. And that's the other reason for my Patreon, actually, is that there's a lot of storytellers out there. And I think there's other ways to make a living while trying to pursue your love of comics. And I cover that. I actually have skills building 
assignments. I have crazy. What the hell's that? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Sometimes you'll get that. That's why you, you want a piece of scrap paper to, to work with. Um, what I'm saying is I, I create a lot of skills building assignments. I share a lot of insights in terms of working with clients, building clients, getting into industries that maybe you're not into now, like video games, commercials, film. These are all important ways to keep expanding your storytelling skills visually and make actually a really good living. I mean, I've been doing comics for a long time, but I've spent more money in comics than I've actually made. And the money I've made is from storyboarding. And so I really help walk you through a lot of ways to uh, earn a living through storyboarding. So if you're interested, check out my Patreon page. There's three levels I have at this point. One's a dollar, I think one's three dollars, and then there's like a five dollar one. And each one offers a lot of good stuff, so. The more Patreon, uh, Patreons, patrons I get, the more stuff I can offer. So please think about it. And if you like what I have to say, I'll be saying a lot more there than I will on my YouTube channel. But it doesn't mean I'm abandoning YouTube altogether. They're just going to be fun, funky videos uh, set to music. And every so often I'll share something that just really doesn't fit on Patreon. Look at this, this is fun. I don't know if this is, if you're familiar with Ralph Steadman, he actually does a technique that uses and abuses pens like this. So this is what I'm talking about, get crazy, try stuff. Out of the, the tools that I've show, shown you today, Hunt 102 is far cheaper than a brush. And it may be the right transition for you if you are traditionally a pen inker. It feels a little more natural and it might be the stepping stone for you to try a brush at some point. So try this, get familiar with the, the techniques that I'm talking about. and consider my Patreon, which will definitely address things a lot more clearly. And I think you'll, you'll find that this is so much more fun than your traditional factory pens that are already sealed. And yeah, see, there's so much more for someone like me, there's so much more control because because I am a little, like I said, I'm a little more heavy handed and I can actually lean on this nib a little bit. I don't think I could pull down with a brush and get the same, the same effect. So there's a thousand marks you can make and I encourage you to get out there and start doing that today and hopefully this video will get you set on the right path. Even though I'm inking nonsense right now, you can see it starts filling up really quick. And within, you know, an hour, it's just a simple hour a day, or even 10 minutes a day, you can really, you can really start to see what exploration can bring you. And there's, again, I, I haven't even scratch the surface, no pun intended, of what I could do. Like I had a friend 
We used to ink with, so there's like two sides to the, this. And this is the side you ink with. My friend was inking on this side and he was just bending the heck out of this. I don't even know how he did this, but it's like, you know, figure out ways to use a pen that you've never done before. I mean, look at this, this is fun. You start to see things, you're like, oh, this looks like, tr like a tree. Short strokes, long strokes, I mean, there's just so many. You can rock the, the pen back and forth. Look at that. That might be useful. And what's fun is if you keep a bunch of these, you start. You can look back and say, oh, hey, you know what? Uh, you make notes like, you know, rocking pen or Stedman. Ugh. That's the thing you gotta be careful of. You see it's hard to write with it. So like, you know, the Stedman technique, Ralph Stedman, and a lot of the scratchy stuff. I mean, you can abuse these too much and actually bend it, and at some point, you just need to get a new, a new nib. I usually get most of my nibs from Dick Blake, but years ago, I bought a fistful of nibs, and so they're still really good. They're in really great shape. As always, thanks for watching. And also, don't forget to subscribe to The Process. And please, if you have more questions, feel free to leave a comment below.